Welcome to the 12 News Weather School. I am your host today, meteorologist Jamie Cagle, and today we're going to be talking about a very fascinating feature to thunderstorms. In fact, it is that feature that really captures your attention and is captured on film quite a bit. We are talking about lightning. Very, very popular to photograph, just as you can see right here in front of you. Uh, we're going to be talking about how thunderstorms generate lightning and some of the dangers of lightning, as well as some of those details you may or may not know about lightning. So let's get started. We'll start out right now with how hot is lightning? So pick a number, put it in your head. How hot in terms of Fahrenheit do you think a bolt of lightning can reach? Upwards of 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That is so much hotter than even the surface of the sun. I mean, lightning hits the earth on average 8.6 million times a day. That is a lot of lightning. We know lightning's dangerous. In fact, as the saying goes, when thunder roars, head indoors. That is your best thing to do when lightning and thunderstorms are rolling through is to seek shelter, get indoors, and wait things out. As you take a look at this map right here, this is lightning fatalities from 2009 to 2018. Arizona is in the top 10 in terms of lightning fatalities there with 14, tied for fourth with North Carolina. And you don't have to be under the thunderstorm to have that lightning danger. Lightning can extend out upwards of four miles from a thunderstorm. So even being near a thunderstorm in close proximity to a thunderstorm still puts you in danger of a lightning strike. So again, when thunder roars, head indoors. Here's an animated explanation as to how thunder is generated by a lightning bolt. That lightning strike rapidly expands that air due to its intense heat and emanating from there, there's your sound wave, and that's what you hear. So you see the lightning strike in the middle of the graphic and how that sound wave emanates in all directions from that lightning bolt. And that's why you see the lightning bolt first and then hear the thunder afterwards. And keep in mind that lightning is traveling to your eye at the speed of light and that thunder traveling to your ears at the speed of sound. Those are two very distinct and different speed. So here's something you can do to determine how far or approximately how far that thunderstorm is away. Now that lightning strike, we see it, it travels to our eyes at the speed of light. We hear the thunder later traveling at the speed of sound. Well knowing those two different velocities, they travel at different speeds, by calculating the time between the two we can calculate the distance. So for every five seconds between a lightning strike and hearing the thunder, is equal to approximately one mile. So how is that lightning bolt generated? Well, as you have a thunderstorm building and building and building, and you have raindrops and even ice crystals in there, and you have a lot of turbulent energy, those raindrops and ice crystals are bumping into one another. As they bump into one another, they generate a charge. So as you look on the left side of this graphic here, there's a large negative charge building in that thunderstorm, and it starts to settle into the bottom of the thunderstorm. Well, just like magnets, opposites attract. So a large positive charge starts to build up at the Earth's surface. It continues to build and build and build, and those charges are trying to get closer and closer and closer to one another until finally they connect. And when they connect, you get a large discharge, and that discharge comes in the form of a lightning bolt. And then as you look to the right side of the graphic here, you can see how everything is redistributed meaning everything is finely balanced. So this is the way the atmosphere returns to balance. So what you're actually seeing in terms of a lightning strike is you're gonna to start to see little tiny segments of that charge working its way towards your surface. And that's what gives it that kind of rigid look, a very jagged look to a lightning bolt, that each section, each segment is climbing or dropping towards your surface or climbing towards the cloud. This is the step leader. This is how that charge starts to propagate through the atmosphere, working its way towards the Earth's surface. These are more or less feeling the way out to find that path of least resistance, dropping down from the thunderstorm, reaching for the Earth's surface. It's reaching for that strong positive charge that starts to climb upwards in order to make that connection. So when that propagating negative charge reaches for that positive charge that's extending upward and makes that connection, all those channels start to illuminate and discharge. 
and that's what you see as a lightning flash. You can see here those tiny, rigid, jagged segments creeping through the atmosphere, looking for that path of least resistance. And when it finally makes a connection, the bolt on the left side, when it finally connects to that positive charge rising from the Earth's surface, it makes a connection and illuminates all of the channels there. This, now here's a term that gets thrown around in the weather community and actually can stir up some arguments amongst meteorologists. The term is heat lightning. Okay, so do we believe that heat can generate lightning? No, I don't think anyone would believe that. We can prove that through science. But the term comes from an old wives tale that's just stuck around for a long time. But what it is, is it's lightning without thunder. So how do you get that? We'll take a look at the graphic here. You have a distant storm. You might actually be under clear skies or you could still be under cloudy skies, but the storm is just so far away that all you see is the flicker of a lightning bolt within the cloud, or you might see the sky illuminate. It might The sky itself might reflect some of that lightning flicker, but you don't hear the thunder. And the problem there is that you can still see the light, the light's still traveling to your eye, but the sound wave, the thunder, is being absorbed by the ground, by the trees, by the buildings, and the sound wave is actually absorbed before it can actually reach your ears. So it's lightning without the thunder. Although well, we're going to address a couple of those lightning myths out there. First of all, that the rubber of the tires is what protects you in a car from a lightning strike. Actually, it's the metal frame of the car that protects you. That metal frame carries the lightning electricity around you so that it can exit the bottom of the car. So as long as you're not touching metal inside the car when the car is struck by lightning, you'll be okay. The current will travel through the frame around you and exit through the bottom of the car. The other myth out there is that when someone is struck by lightning, they become electrified. That's not true. The body doesn't carry and hold on to that electric charge. Now, granted, the lightning strike is gonna knock you over, uh, it can knock you out, it can even kill you, but your body will not hold on to the charge. So anybody coming to your aid can touch you without being electrocuted themselves. And finally, the last one, the most common one, is lightning doesn't strike the same, pla same place twice. Just ask, buildings like the Empire State Building or the Sears Tower if they've been struck more than once. So that one also not true. Like, well, thank you once again for joining me for today's 12 News Weather School. I appreciate you spending the time with me. I hope you found this to be educational, informative, and somewhat enlightening, if you know what I mean. And we will see you again on the next episode of 12 News Weather School.